Hi, and welcome to this overview of Teslax, a CAN bus explorer for iOS. Do not use Teslax while driving, and please operate your vehicle and Teslax safely and obey all laws, regulations, and safety guidelines. When connecting an accessory to your vehicle to snoop on CAN bus data, please do so at your own risk. When properly used, these devices can interfere with the traffic on the CAN bus and cause undesirable behavior in your vehicle. Some devices require additional wiring. In the end, you could damage your vehicle and void the warranty so please proceed at your own risk. Also, please check out the previous video where we discussed some basics and discussed compatible accessories. Let's briefly talk about how Teslax is organized. The app has three main parts. First is the main menu, accessible in the upper left. This menu provides you access to the presets list and the signals list. From this menu, you can also select the log file or data source you wish to work with. Second is the signal database, which contains the information necessary to decode CAN bus data into useful values. If you're familiar with CAN bus utilities, you can think of this as the DBC file. Third is the visualization. This is where you configure gauges, widgets, and pages that you wish to see. Teslax has a concept of preset, which is a saved signal database and configured visualization. This allows you to quickly switch between different pre-configured visualizations and signal databases. This is useful for switching between different vehicle makes and models or different sets of signals and visualizations for different use cases. Teslax comes with several bundled examples that are updated from time to time, but the app does not maintain a database of presets for all vehicles. Now, let's look at how CAN bus data flows through the app. Elements of your visualization are dependent on messages and signals. When an item is added to your visualization, for example a gauge or page level visualization, you are often asked to select a message or signal from your database. Under the hood, Teslax begins observing the data stream for this signal, and more specifically we start watching for the signal's parent message. Data begins streaming when you connect a data source, which can either be a log file or an accessory. When a CAN frame comes in from the data source, Teslax checks to see if any part of the visualization is watching for that message or signal. If the signal is being observed, the payload is decoded and a value is updated in the user interface. Extra strength users have the ability to log the data stream. There is a setting to enable or disable filtering. If filters are disabled, each frame is captured by the log file directly as it comes in from the data source. If filtering is enabled, only messages that are being observed will be logged to file. Also, if you're using JavaScript signals, the JavaScript engine is only updated with signals that are being observed, but that's a topic for another video. To change presets, use the main menu and select Presets. Tap the preset you wish to activate, and you'll notice that in this case, the gauges and signals have all changed from a Mazda preset to a Tesla preset. There are several preset level settings that can be edited from the preset list. Note that editing presets is reserved for users who have purchased the extra strength feature set. From the preset list, tap the I button next to the preset you wish to modify. The settings are shown, including the location augmentation, bus numbering, and script settings. At the bottom, there are some actions you can perform with this preset. To edit these settings, tap the edit button in the upper right. Next, let's see how to edit the visualization. First, tap the ellipsis button in the upper right hand corner. Select Edit Gauges and Layout. From the Pages list, tap the I button next to the page you wish to edit. You will see settings such as name and icon, and some pages have additional settings. Tap the New button to add a new page. You'll be presented with a list of page types. You can provide the page a name and icon, and if there are any additional settings, you can configure them here. Some page types contain multiple widgets or gauges. Tap the row to see any child widgets. Tap New to add children, such as an additional gauge. The gauge settings will appear where you can configure the signal and any additional options. This case, we're adding longitude and latitude by searching the signal list and selecting the desired signal. 
you can also configure additional options like the type of gauge. Returning to the main screen and selecting this new page, you will see the new gauges appear. Notice also the yellow bar that reminds you that you have chosen signals that are on a second bus and thus will require a multi-bus data source in order to update. Next, let's see how to connect an accessory. First, tap the accessories item from the main menu. Any Bluetooth devices that are discovered will appear in the list under Bluetooth. This includes Bluetooth Classic accessories like the OBD Link MX Plus as well as Bluetooth Low Energy accessories. The Wi-Fi tab allows you to connect to a Wi-Fi accessory. Enter the host IP and port and tap Connect. Similarly, a host IP and port are necessary for a Panda accessory. The passive mode is a special use case which should usually be left off. Wi-Fi and Panda devices will need access to your local area network and the iOS permissions. Tap Connect to initiate a session. The map page is part of the Extra Strength 2.0 feature set and it allows you to decode longitude and latitude signals from the CAN bus. Note that the default presets require a chassis bus and hence will require a two bus setup. The new location augmentation feature can be used to provide location information in single bus setups. You can also optionally choose another signal to color between red and green with minimum and maximum values. The graph page provides a rolling view of up to eight signals. You can configure the number of samples on the setting screen and this determines the length of the x-axis. The graph will determine its own viewport and colors are assigned by the system. The drag timer is another new feature in Teslax 2.0 for Extra Strength 2.0 users. It is extensively configurable and you can choose specific signals to provide values for speed, odometer, pedals, and acceleration. The pedals signals are used to detect cheetah launches. The timer will not start if the brake is applied or the accelerator is at zero. Braking or slowing down will stop the timer and any timers that have yet to complete will be marked did not finish. Timer accuracy is determined by many factors, including how busy the CAN bus is and how many signals Teslax is decoding at any given time, and how busy the phone is with other tasks. One interesting story is that one user reported that the DI brake pedal state, a signal used in the sample preset, did not work for their vehicle. Teslax's configurability allowed them to swap this signal for VC left brake pressed, and they were up and running with minimal delay. The next release will make this change more broadly in the sample presets as to be more compatible with more vehicles. As always, please obey all laws and only operate Teslax in a safe manner. Before using the drag timer, first determine if you are able to safely and legally perform a timing run. Press tap here to begin and start your deceleration to zero. The app will remind you to be safe before starting your run. When the brake is released and the accelerator is above zero, the timing will begin. The timers will stop as you pass certain speeds and the odometer passes certain distances. Once your timing run is complete, you may share the results using the iOS share sheet. The matrix view is intended to visualize large numbers of similar values. The coloring is a gradient determined by value, with red being the minimum and green being the maximum. Red and green flags show the maximum and minimum values. The matrix view can accept data from two types of signals. Each signal cell can source its own value from its own signal. A minimum and maximum value, combined with an index of which cell is the max and which cell is the min, can be used to provide maximum and minimum values directly. The default Tesla 3Y and Plaid presets are configured with both types of updates, resulting in a slow rolling update over time as well as a maximum and minimum value that pops in at random times. As a result, values aren't really comparable over time, especially if overall power draw from the battery varies over time such as during acceleration or deceleration. In summary, Teslax is packed with many great features. The basic features of the application are free. All users are able to connect to an accessory and visualize the first page of gauges in the sample presets. This is a good way to see if Teslax works with your accessory and vehicle. 
Before purchasing any additional features, it is recommended that you try out as much of the free functionality as possible and make sure your accessories work as expected. The extended release purchase activates the additional pages of the sample presets and allows you to edit the visualization and add tabs and gauges by picking from the signal database found in the bundled presets. Extra Strength 1.0 adds a host of additional features and allows you to edit the signal database and create your own presets. With the new Extra Strength 2.0 feature set, the new full page visualizations become available. A one-time five-day demo is available for users to try out all these features before purchase. And that's the overview, so thanks for watching. Please check out Teslax 2.0, now available in the App Store.